Hey everybody, I want to welcome you to the September Plane Talk. And I want to well, I'm welcome you guys and thank you for being part of Graves Golf and, and all the members out there, all the Single Plane Anywhere members and all the elite members and VIP members. I really want to thank you guys for being part of what we do here and you know, really exciting times. And we'll talk more about that tonight. Um, tonight's topic is going to be about um, the pump drill um, and really kind of how to practice correctly, <laughs> how to pra not practice incorrectly, but more how to make sure you're doing it right. And the real reason I'm bringing this up and why I'm kind of doing an addendum is um, the last 10% show we we did, which is a single plane um, academy um, uh, webinar we do every month. I did one in late September and I did it and I brought up the plane, the pump drill and it was crazy. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. I'll talk about that here more in a second. Um, I'll, when I get into that, I'll, I'll talk more about that. But anyway, so what is tonight's topic? Tonight's topic is about practicing perfect. Tonight's topic is about practicing correctly. And the reason it's brought up is because, again, it's an addendum to last, the last 10% show we did. The last 10% show we did, I started out this way. And I talked about a gentleman, and I'm going to bring it up again because I'll, it's a good reminder. A gentleman came, worked with me. His name was Joe. Okay, And Joe came into me. This was a few years back. And Joe was a decent golfer. I mean, he probably shot 85 to 90. He was a decent golfer. And we worked and worked and worked. And Joe got into the high 70s, okay? And Joe came to me and he said, Tim, I want to work this winter. I want to work over this winter. And I want to do something over this winter to make me hit a longer, to give me a little bit more in plane, but in particular to get better leverage, get a little more distance, and to really work on my swing. I said, great. So I showed Joe the pump drill. And basically what Joe did, and then Joe was a med tech. He worked in a lab. He worked at the VA hospital. He worked like from the, the 11 o'clock shift at night till 7 in the morning. And Joe would run tests in the lab, and he'd sit there and he'd wait. That's what Joe told me. He'd sit there and he'd wait. And during wait period of these tests, he'd pull out a training aid, and he'd do the pump drill inside. He'd do it in the lab. He'd do a little short training club and our, in a single plane position trainer. He'd do it in the lab. So Joe did this over the winter. He did this like October, November, December, January, did it over the winter. And then Joe came and saw me in the spring. Joe didn't see me over the winter. He saw me in the spring. And Joe comes out there in, in like February, March. And remember, as before the spring, Joe was hit a nice little straight ball to maybe a little small draw. He was shooting, you know, in the, in the high 70s. You know, he'd come down about like 10 shots in the score. Well, all of a sudden, Joe, I see Joe in this lesson. And I start doing the lesson. And Joe's got this massive slice work. And he's pulling it, slicing it, topping it. And I'm like, what just happened? I mean, I'm, like, I'm looking at Joe like, do we have an injury? Did something, something happen? What's going on? And I'm looking at Joe. I'm like, what's going on? I'm filming him. I'm like, Joe, you know, all those lessons we had prior to this, you were getting closer and closer on plane. Now you revert, reverted. I mean, you, you've lost probably half to three-fourths of what you'd gained. And Joe looks at me. He goes, well, let me show what I did. He starts doing the pump drill. And I look at him. I'm like, Joe, you're doing that completely wrong. You're actually gearing in a bad swing right now. And he looked at me. He's like, do you know how many times I've done this? And I said, I have no idea. And he goes, tens of thousands of times. And I said, okay, Joe, well, here's the problem is the reality is you're doing it wrong. The perception that you see is you're doing it right. And this is the problem because this is really the topic for tonight is perception versus reality. Okay. It's very interesting. I get a lot of people that ask me in instruction, what do you teach? What do you guys teach? And they, they expect us to say, you know, the single plane swing by Mo Norman. They want me to talk about, you know, position zero, position one or whatever it is, you know, who knows? I mean, they're, they're asking me quickly, you know, over a dinner, dinner or something. And I'm always looking at them and my answer is always, I teach my students to match up perception versus reality. Okay. Because here's what it comes down to is I hope every one of you guys practice. You guys may practice five minutes a day. You may practice five minutes a week. You guys may practice five hours a day. You may practice everything in between. I don't know. I mean, hopefully you guys get some practice in, okay? But the question is when you guys are practicing, and obviously you're practicing to improve. I assume you're not just out there getting aerobic exercise and just, you know, it's, hopefully it's nice out. Hopefully you're, you're enjoying the practice, okay? But hopefully you're practicing to improve. If you're not, let's not practice at all. Let's spend the time doing something else and just play some golf or whatever, okay? But hopefully you're practicing to improve. But here's what it comes down to. How do you check to make sure you're doing perfect practice? How do you check to make sure that when you're practicing, it is correct? Because that's the key. 
Because that's what we call our shows that we do for the members, the 10% shows. Because we know it has been proven that only 10% of golfers actually will improve when they're practicing or when they practice. So think about it. That means that only 10% of the golfers are actually practicing correctly. Does that make sense to everybody out there? Because 100% of golfers might be practicing, but if 90% aren't getting better, they've got to be practicing incorrectly. Does that make sense? So I'm going to say this one more time. I think we have a slide on it. How do you check? Because I want you to write this down. How do you check to make sure you're doing perfect practice? And guys, this is really critical. So every time you're out there practicing, you may be putting, you may be chipping, you may be doing the drill we're going to do tonight that I'm going to get into very seriously here. Whatever you're doing here, how do you make sure that my practice today, I'm doing it right? Okay? And yes, training aids, and I've gotten a full training aids back here. That's a massive start. But these are just templates to guide you in the correct direction. Did you hear what I just said? They're just templates to guide you in the correct direction and to give you reminders. But they do not guarantee perfect practice. They just give you a better chance to have a good to perfect practice. Does that make sense? These just increase the odds for you. So do never think, and please, and guys, I'm the one that Todd and I created every one of these training aids. In fact, I created over half of them, just like them Todd, Okay. So I'm going to promote these like crazy, but I will never tell you this is going to guarantee you improvement right here. I'm not going to tell you that. This is going to help aid in your improvement and it will speed up improvement, but it's just a template to give you reminders to help you on your journey to perfect practice. Did you hear what I just said? That's what these are for. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to show you guys the pump drill and I'm going to show you the same drill I showed Joe. Joe and I went over this drill. We talked about this drill and then Joe one did this wrong. And here's the interesting thing. I presented it in this last 10% show in the members web, web members webinar a couple weeks ago. And it literally two days later, I got an email and a text and a call from Trent White and Trent's one of my master's instructors. Trent's been with me for like 13 or 14 years. And by the way, I'm going to give Trent White congratulations. He just had twins um, 48 hours ago. He had a twin boy and a twin girl. So, so and congratulations, Trent. I'm, I assume he's not watching this tonight. I assume he's, yeah, okay, but congratulations. So it's, it's child number two and number three, okay? And, and Trent, when he first started working with us, he was talking about never getting married, okay? So anyway, but Congratulations, Trent. Um, anyway, a lot of you members out there know Trent, so please tell him congratulations. He's now got a new daughter, a new baby daughter, girl, and they're twins and a baby boy. It's just fantastic. But anyway, but Trent, after the last webinar, before he had these two kids, Trent emailed me or then texted me and then called me and goes, Tim, that webinar you did, just did was like crack cocaine for our members. Oh my God, it was like a drug for them. He goes, every video I'm getting in right now is the pump drill. Every video. You know, Trent reviews 10, 15, 20 videos a day along with my other guys out there. He goes, like every video is on the pump drill. And I said, so what are you seeing? He goes, most of them are doing it wrong. He and I go, and I go, what do you mean most? He goes, Tim, 70, 80% of them aren't doing it right, even after watching this. And he goes, I'm correcting, I'm correcting. He goes, they're better. He goes, I hope that I assume they're better than they were, but I'm correcting, I'm correcting. Well, I talked to Trent the other day, congratulating him on his twins. I said, how's it coming? He goes, they're getting better. He goes, those same guys are sending me those pump drill videos, and they're getting better. They're getting a lot better, but they still got work to do. So listen to what he's saying. It's not me telling you guys this. It's one of my master's instructors in the field who's doing video analysis every single day of our members. And he's saying, God, even watching this and doing it again and again and again, they're getting better. They're getting better. Do you understand this? So what would happen if these students were not sending in video? They're Joe Legault. They're Joe. Okay? They're him. They're Joe. That's what they're doing. They're potentially making themselves worse. Okay? So... I'm going to show you the pump drill tonight. I'm going to show you some very exacting moves. But you've got to think to yourself, how can I make sure I'm practicing this perfect every single time? Because, guys, this is the drill. This is probably one, if you had to say one of the top five drills we do, this may be one of the top three drills we do, okay? So I'm going to set up the station for you guys. So first thing I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to set it up just like you should at home, okay? I'm going to set up the ABT, lineman ball position trainer, okay? Put three golf balls down. One in ball position, I'm going to go five foot back, one foot in, make sure I get in the screen. Nope, I'm off the screen. I'm going to go up a little bit. Don't need to go past this right here. Okay. So five foot back, one foot in. Okay. Good. Perfect. So there we go. Okay, we got it. 
I'm going to lower that camera just a little bit and we'll get it in there. Okay, it won't matter because just, just so we get that last one. Okay, so I've got this in the screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, so I've got, I've got these balls. I've got it set up. Guys, this is his basic setup for the single plane position trainer setup. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a yardstick and point it between the back ball and the ball back here that's five foot back, one foot in. So that's at an angle. So as you see, I got my alignment ball position trainer and I have an angle to that. Very critical and you guys will see why. So now I have my single play position trainer. And I'm going to talk about this tonight. The other night, I did it with a club in my hand. I did the training group club. So I'm going to do the single plane position trainer. And if I have time, I'll get in the training group club. But I'm going to bring this up right now for a reason. Because I don't want you, if you have this in your hand, you're not thinking about swing. You're thinking about positions. Okay, the second you throw a club in your hand, a club head, a grip in your hand, you're thinking about swing. And, and our brain kind of goes crazy about the swing. This is about positions, Okay. This is what we're doing. How do we check to make sure you're doing this right? So now, I'm going to set up right now, make sure I'm on the screen, perfect, okay? I'm going to set up right now in position zero, okay? And if you guys, if you need, I'm not going to cover the position zero, position one, position two, I'm not going to cover those. Review our single plane material, go to on demand, review these. It's every video we've probably ever done covers these, okay? So if you're lost in this right now, please go review that. That's not what tonight's about. Tonight's about the pump drill, okay? So now, I go, I'm sitting up over position. I'm going to bring this in a little further. I'll just go that way, okay? So you guys will see it, okay? Then I'm going to bring this, and I'm going to go to position one, position two. Now, here's where the pump drill comes in. The pump drill is a position. We go from position two to position three. Position two is the top of the swing to now position three, okay? So I'm pumping down to basically hands to the golf ball, okay? So what the pump drill is, is it's the motion. You guys can call it, some will call it, you know, just past transition. Some will call it the downswing. Some will call it, you know, the, as we get into leverage bag drill, you know, that's that kind of, but we call it, it's also known as the pump drill, okay? So I'm going to go to the top of the swing. Now, I'm going to start bringing this down, pumping down towards the ball. Now, here's the checkpoints. As I go from position two and I start coming down, here's checkpoint number one, okay? As I look down at the single plane position trainer, <coughs> and I look down at it, there's a black tape on the trainer, okay? There's a black tape just below the grip, okay? As I pump down, I do not see any white on the left-hand side of this. I see only black and white. So as I pump down, I see black, no white on the left-hand side or the leading side of it. That is critical. The reason is because too many people, they pump down, they lose all the leverage in the wrist, which is speed, and they pump down, they get in a bad position with the hands. This is not the appropriate position for a pump drill. As you pump down, we're pumping down, and we're seeing only black and then white on the right side of this. That's number one. Here's number two. As I pump down and get the club or my hands to the golf ball, this club, this single plane position trainer, this stick is lined up with that yardstick. It is not here. That is over the top. So many people, and this is what Trent saw, and this is just classic, will pump down and they're getting to this position. They think that's the pump drill. That is not the pump drill. My shoulders in this position, number three, are not square to the ball yet. They're still close to the target. So if this club, but single plane position trainer here, is outside my shoulder line, that's the over-the-top move. That's going to be a pull. That's going to be a top. That's going to be a big old slice. Okay? Could potentially be a shake with your irons. So as you're pumping down, it lines up with the yardstick. It is staying along my shoulder line. The beauty of using a single plane position trainer is as you pump down, the back end is pointed to right field. It is not pointed to the target. Right now, this target is basically right here. Okay, so the target line would be just inside this club here, right there. Notice where this is pointing. It's pointing to right field. Okay, it's along this line. Guys, that's a straight ball. That's a draw. That's a cut. Listen to what I'm saying right now. That's a straight ball. That's on plane, perfect, getting the club down the line. That's a draw. If you want to hit a slight draw, look, come a little side that. This is a cut. That's over the top or a slice, okay? So it, that's number one. We're going to line that up. Number two is we're going to get the elbow in front of the trail hip. 
So notice, I'll give you a face on view. As I come down, my elbow is getting in front of my trail hip. This is not the pump drill. That's not the pump drill. Because if I do that and I come down to position three and my elbow is in front of my hip, by the time it gets in front of the hip, I'm just going to flip the club over. So I'm going to push my hands forward. Okay? I'm going to push it forward and get the elbow in front of the front hip. Now, here's the interesting part. If you got the correct distance to the golf ball, this should be no problem at all. Now, for conventional golfers, it's a problem. If I get really close to the golf ball, I have nowhere for my elbow to go. I've got to jump up and spin out of the way to get my elbow in front of the hip. Guys, all good golf swings, that's what I'm saying here, all good golfers, all good ball strikers get that elbow going in front of the trail hip. In fact, so much so, if you wear a baggy jacket, your elbow will hit that jacket. Okay, and even if you've got a belly, it doesn't matter. We get far enough away that we can get the elbow in front of the hip easy. So now my hands are getting towards the golf ball. My elbow's in front of the hip, okay? My lead knee is still flexed as I get into this position. That lead knee being flexed is what drops this trail shoulder and allows me to get in that position. Because notice, as I go from position two to position three, so here's the pump drill. This trail shoulder is dropping. In fact... If you took the plane of the golf swing, so right now you send a video into my coach, and they draw the plane of the golf swing. So here's the plane. Boom, it goes right up. When you're going from position two to three, your shoulder will go right down the plane line. It's not going to go over the plane line. It's not going to go under the plane line. It's going to go right down that plane line. It's called the shoulder plane. Well, guess what? That shoulder plane is what allows the arms to move properly, which allows the hands to get to the golf ball properly. Okay? That's shoulder plane. Well, all of a sudden, we get up here, and we're pumping down, and we're doing this. Watch my trail shoulder. Where's it going? It's going over. My shoulder isn't on a plane anymore. It's going on the top of the plane. Club's getting steep. It's going over, causing the slice, pull, hook, shank. Okay. Now, so pump drill, position two to three. So here's check, check number one is as we go down, okay, I'm looking at the single plane position trainer. I don't see any white on it. Number two, the butt end of this is pointed towards right field. It's lined up with the yardstick. Number three, I'm getting the elbow in front of the trail hip. Number four, the lead knee is still flexed, which allows me to get in that position. Now, if you guys are doing this at home, you better do it slow. Remember our saying, the slower you do it, the faster you get it. You know why you're going to do it slow? Because a lot of you guys are going to try to get in this position and go, okay, my body won't let me get there. Or I've never felt that before in my life. Or you've got to be kidding me. Okay? Well, guess what? With that being said, that means you're not flexible enough to get there or your body hasn't allowed you to be flexible enough to get there. So just doing this slow is going to help you with the flexibility. Promise you it will. It'll help you a ton with flexibility. So you're going to do it very slow to get there, okay? So we're going to go position two to position three. Even if you go halfway because you're not flexible to get back there and you just go to position three. Position three. Notice, I'm not even going down to position four. Don't need to. Position three. I'm holding this angle, okay? I'm not releasing this. I'm not casting it. I'm holding this angle to allow myself to get maximum speed, maximum leverage, which give me maximum distance and the most accuracy right there. So as I pump down, I'm not even getting across the body. Don't need to. I'm just pumping down, getting this towards right field, then eventually I'll go from three to four. I'm not going to do it here. The pump drill is from position two to position three. Position two to position three. That's the pump drill, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a couple other nuances or addendums of this that are critical. And I showed this in the last program, and I think this is what kind of freaked everybody out. So let me get a, I got a training club here, a training grip on here, okay? Yeah, this is a short game impact trainer, but it's got a training club on there. So now, I'm going to go to position, I'm going to get set up, go to position one, position two, position three, back to impact, okay? Now, I'm going to show you guys something here. And I want you guys right now to mark this position with my hands, okay? And you should see it. In fact, it's right on the edge of this bag. I'm going to stay in this position. So on this camera, when I set up, you will see my hands are right on the edge of that bag. I would suggest pulling a chair in there. I would suggest getting something set up in there. Get something that you can mark that position, okay? Because here's what it comes down to. I go to position one. Go to position two. 
I go to position three. Notice, my hands are on that same spot I just marked or slightly inside it. They are not outside. And this is where Joe made the biggest mistake because this is what he did. He set up, so mark this position. You guys see it by the bag in the background right here, okay? He went up and then he pumped like this. He pumped like this. Well, look where my hands are right now. They're way above the impact position. Remember, we set up, we make impact, Think about that. We set up when we make impact. So if we're setting up right here, and all of a sudden we're pumping our hands on top, what's that doing? That's making me stand up. It's making me come over the top. It's making my shaft come over the top. It's making me have to get steep to get to the ball when I start hitting golf balls. So when you do this pump drill, you have to have a check system. Notice what I just said, that the hands come back to the same spot or slightly inside. And for a lot of you, that's going to feel very tight. It's going to be tight in the body. That's why we're moving the body when we do the pump drill. I'm not keeping the hips still. Point number four or five here. When you do this pump drill, it's not skill hips. It's not a putting drill. We are moving the hips. We're moving the hips. We're moving the hips. We're moving the hips. Guys, that move of the hips is what allows us to get into that proper position. We're going position one, position two. Now, pump down, pump down, pump down. We're moving the hips in that proper position. But that position of the hands... That position to get that hands in that same spot or lower is critical. So you give us a down the line view to one of my coaches. They see this. They're going to set up and they're going to circle the hands. They're going to take it. You do the pump drill. They're going to say, are the hands back in that spot or are they above it? Is that shaft down the line? Is it not? Is the toe of the clock? There's all kinds of things they're going to check. But the point is, are you doing that drill correctly? Guys, do it a million times. You do it a million times incorrect, you're a million times worse. <laughs> do it 10 times. You do it 10 times correct, you're, you're, you're 10 times better. Do you guys understand this? That is critical on this, okay? Because it's very simple, very simple to sit and set all this stuff up and then not think, and we go brain dead, and all of a sudden we're doing a drill improperly. This template Helps you get lined up properly. It helps you get the right width of the ball. It helps you get the face square in the club. It helps you get the right stance. But it's a template. It doesn't guarantee you a proper pump drill. I've got position zero, position one. I've got it all set up here. It's great. It doesn't guarantee a proper pump drill. I've got a training grip club. I've got a single plane position trainer. Yeah, this aids me. I can look at the black mark on here. I can make sure my grip is proper. Guys, it's a huge, it's an incredible template. I can even get this back in, which is huge, to make sure it's pointing right field. It doesn't guarantee I'm doing it right. So that's why when you wrote down tonight, how do I check to make sure I'm doing it perfect? That's the key. That's the key. Because if you're not doing it perfect, if you're not doing it right, listen to me very carefully. Don't do it at all. Please don't do it at all. Because it's just aerobic exercise that's going to make you potentially worse. Okay? So your focus, and that's the theme for tonight, is how do I guarantee I'm doing it perfect every single time? And I'll, and I will absolutely right now, no doubt about it, I will give accolades, I will clap my hands, I'll pat you guys in the back. All you guys that said, and, and literally my staff out there said so they got thousands of videos on the pump drill that came in after the last 10% show. Literally. Now obviously some are multiple videos, but they literally said they got the many and it was, I mean, literally, Trent called me up and goes, it's like a drug for these guys. Like, it's crazy. They went nuts in this thing. I'm like, awesome. That's awesome. Members, send in more video on the pump drill. Guys, this is your winter drills. This is your spring drills. This is your summer drills. This is your fall drills. This is the drill. What do you think these guys are doing on the tour when they sit there and they're doing this out in the pre-swing and they're doing a little motion of the swings? They're doing the same thing. Now, it's easier for us because of where we stand. It's easier for us because the way we stand towards it. It's easier for us because we're keeping on a single plane. We're not trying to jump into certain positions. But that's what they're doing. And we're trying to get you guys the same thing, okay? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. But, again, no matter what drills. Guys, if you were on demand right now and you said, how many drills are on there? If I looked at my staff and said, how many drills are on demand? I mean, it's literally thousands, am I right? I mean, I mean Thomas right now is just laughing. He's like, there's no way to count that. Don't do, if you can't guarantee you're doing them right, I don't want you to do one of them. I literally don't want you to do one of them. You've got to figure out a way for yourself to guarantee that when you're doing these drills, I don't care if it's a putting drill, a chipping drill, a pitching drill, a bunker drill, a full swing drill, an in-swing drill, I don't care that when you're doing that drill, you're doing it right. And here's what other, the other thing that happens, very interesting, I promise you, and the members will attest to this, 
You send in a video to our coach, all of a sudden he's saying, nope, you got to do this, you got to change this. You know, this is looking bad, but you got to change this and do this. All of a sudden you go video your swing again, and you're like, nope, I didn't make the change. You're looking at yourself, and you know, instantaneously, nope, I didn't make the change. Or, yep, I did. Man, that's really good. I'm going to send that back in. Then the instructor all of a sudden says, well, let's tweak this, let's tweak that. Okay? You'll know because they're instructing you to instruct yourself. Listen to what I just said. Our coaches are not sitting there saying, yes, no, no, yes. They're instructing you to be able to instruct yourself. They're teaching you how to practice perfect. Do you hear what I'm saying right now? They're instructing you because they know 99% of the practice you do will be by yourself. Nobody's going to be eyeballing you. Nobody's going to be watching you. If they are, most of them don't even know what they're talking about. Okay? Unless you're at a school or, or one of us personally, they don't know. So they're instructing you to instruct yourself because they, what they could do is they can sit there and say, nope, that's not right. Your hands are in a bad position. Done. No, they're going to sit there and say, get those hands lower. This is what it should look like. This is where we want to be. Go reference this. Go reference that. That's what they're going to tell you. They're trying to make you your own best instructor. Do you understand that? And when you become your own best instructor, do you understand the rapid improvement that occurs? It is crazy. Okay. It is crazy. I mean, enough said. You guys know I've talked and talked and talked and talked and talked about this in length about that, but that's what this is all about, okay? Um, I'm going to leave it there. Guys, if you want that right there on steroids, you want the next level of that, re refer back to the 10% show, which is a couple weeks ago. We covered that drill for like 30 or 40 minutes. Um, it was just like, we, I went in a little bit more depth on it. Refer to that. I'm stopping it right now because I want to take some questions tonight. I'd always like to get a few questions when we do the public webinars, okay? And kind of see where these are going tonight. Okay. Um, first question. How long does it take the average seven-year-old to learn the system? Peter. <laughs> I love the question, Peter. Uh, honestly, I mean, you, you heard me the way I talked in the beginning, Peter. Um, you may never learn it if you don't have a way to practice, do your practice perfect. You may just do circles. Or this may just be another system you're going to go through. You went and tried you know, this one. You went and tried that one. You went and tried this one. And now all of a sudden, you made your pit stop at single plane, and you don't know how to practice. You don't know how to check yourself. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to make sure you're practicing perfect, and you'll just go on to the next one. We understand that. Maybe you'll come back. Maybe you won't. Or you'll decide, I'm going to take that leap. I'm actually going to send in the video to the coach. I'm actually going to come see the guys in person. I'm actually going to go get some serious with this. I'm actually going to make sure I got my clubs fit me to this methodology. You're going to take that leap. Guys, you notice what I just said there. It is fascinating how many people I email every single day and they're asking me all these questions on the golf swing, which guys, I mean, I get hundreds and hundreds of emails a day. Okay. I'll bet between myself and my staff, we get at least a thousand emails a day. Even probably more than that. And it's amazing to me how many will call in these questions. And they're asking very simple questions and I go pull their name up on the website and I've got no fittings on them. None. I'm not saying I sold them clubs. I don't care less. They haven't even fit their clubs with a single plane system. If I haven't sent them their fittings, how the hell are they fitting their own clubs? So they're out there with clubs that are too upright, too flat, too short, too long, whatever it is, grips too small, whatever it is. And now they have all these questions. Stop. Stop. Let me give you a little secret. I'm going to just tell you this right now to the public. If we haven't fit you, I'm not talking about by selling your clubs. We can if we want. But I'm talking about if you have not fit your clubs a single plane system, if you have not fit your clubs, do not send us emails. Do not send us questions. It is irrelevant. Because you're fighting your equipment, okay? So that was why I asked that question for Peter. If you got your clothes for the system, man, you are so far into the system. It is great. It is amazing. It's amazing how many people will never do that. That's number one. Number two, how serious are you about every time you go out practice or practicing properly, practicing correctly? Not just go out there just pounding balls because that's what 90% of people do. You're out there actually working on something. Or my eyes over the ball when I putt? Do I have an open stance and my hands go down the line when I chip? I mean, simple things, but how do you check that? Because if you can check it and you have a great check system, you will get better rapidly. Okay? And then the other thing is to find better. And I won't get into that now, but is better scoring better, ball striking better? Most people think that's combined. Yes, ball striking better will help your scoring, but not significantly. You want to score better, you get in your short game gets better, your on-course instruction, your mental game gets better, okay? Your flexibility gets better, and you will go rock on your scores. You will rock, okay? You're going to work on ball striking, it will get better, but it takes time. It takes time, okay? Let's put all that together. Let's put that in a big package together. And all of a sudden, we got guys that are shooting their age that never dreamed of doing that. That are actually winning club championships and never dreamed of doing that. I got 71, 72 year old guys. You saw in my last newsletter, they're shooting their age. And they couldn't break an 80 six months ago, okay? And now they're shooting the high 60s, low 70s. They're shooting their age and they couldn't dream of it. Talk to them about how they did it. They'll tell you, okay? So that's really the answer to that question for you. Next question. How far back is the club face supposed to be from the ball? 
So when you set up, Jerry, it's based on the club itself. So when you set up, for example, over a six iron, okay, and we get over the ABT here, okay, and you notice I got a six iron stance, so here's my front foot, here's my trail foot, okay, and when I set up over that six iron and put it in iron ball position, so now, when I sit up in a six iron width and I get my proper shoulder tip, proper spine tilt, my nose is going to be a few inches behind the golf ball. That's where the golf, the golf club sets. That's how far behind it. It's always below the nose. If I start getting a driver width, and you see I get driver width, my nose backed up, the club will sit underneath my nose. So now it's further back, usually about six to eight inches. Now, I get into a wedge distance. Notice, my nose is basically right on the ball. It's a great question for this. It's a huge mistake I see golfers make. They'll get over top of a pitch wedge or a sand wedge in a full swing or even a pitch and they'll set up over and they'll put the club behind the ball. Now, when you set up over a short iron, your nose is right in the edge of the golf ball. Put the club right in the golf ball. It's always body. We call it clubs always body center or right below the nose. So it nose, it starts in the same spot. Okay. So check it, put it on video, check it, see if that clubs are underneath that nose. That's the key. All right. Next question. What is the weight distribution between the lead leg and the trail leg after the transition? Is it the same at impact? No, but Michael, it's, I mean, here's the deal. Most people who talk about weight distribution, it's not a bad question, but when it's brought up, it's because they have swing issues and those swing issues are causing poor weight distribution. If you work here, let me put it this way. I've never seen anybody who's fixed the weight distribution. All of a sudden they get a single plane swing. It doesn't work that way. What happens is they work on their single plane swing. They work in proper positions and weight distribution occurs. Does that make sense? So, and there's a couple things to look at though. Number one, when you go to the top of the swing, okay, the weight is still on the inside of the trail knee. It is not on the outside of the knee. It does not bow out. It does not flex out. The hip does not turn so far or you don't straighten that trail knee. So many people lack flexibility or have limited flexibility in the way they turn the trail hip is just straighten that knee. That's not a hip turn. That's just a straighten of the leg. We do lose some flex in the trail knee, but it still stays slightly flexed and the weight stays on the inside of the knee or on the ball of the foot. Now, as I transition down, the weight is going towards that lead knee or the lead toe of the lead foot. So the weight is transitioning towards the lead side. So that transition is going forward now. And now as I get the impact, the weight is towards the ball of the lead foot, maybe just inside the toe and on that lead knee. It is not straightened out and over the top right now that weights on my heel okay my hips pulled out my shoulders over and the weight goes towards the heel so the weight stays basically on the insides of the balls of your feet from basically top of the swing through impact through release and then after release it comes up and you're done okay but it stays inside that hey guys oh Go look at the Improve Your Move DVD. It talks about that dramatically, okay? Even my Flexibility Exercise DVD talks about how that important it is to get that inside that area, okay? There's a lot of DVDs that talk about that. But like I said, just be careful on this. A lot of people think they can fix the weight distribution and they fix their swing. No. Work on proper positions on the swing in good balance. Notice what I said there. And then all of a sudden, the weight distribution will happen, okay? Next question. You have stated that we should be back from the ball about 36 inches from a driver. Do you have any way of knowing that you are in the proper distance without some sort of guide? Yeah, Charles, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Here's what it comes down to. You measure it so many times when you're practicing. That's why we have the ABT and we have the yardstick and we set this down. Okay. And we set up over and we got a driver. So I'm going to pull out my paradigm driver here. Okay. I don't need to tee it up. I'll just put it here. I put it two inches outside the end of that driver, three inches so I don't hit the stick. I go two to three inches inside. Now I set it up, and now I'm in perfect position, distance to the ball. So right now I'm in perfect distance to the ball. I'm 36 inches from that golf ball, and I hit one. I tee another one up, I hit it. Notice, I should be able to tee up a thousand golf balls from that and not have to move a thing because I'm hitting it off a tee. I'm not making a divot or anything. I hit another one. And guess what? Over time, doing this enough, you will know if you're 36 and a half inches, you'll know if you're 35 and a half inches. It'll feel weird because you've checked it so many times. But here's the deal. If you're not doing this every single time using these two aids, like I said training aids right here. If you're too lazy, just feel embarrassed. Um, I don't know what you want to say. Because I'll tell you right now, I went and practiced one hour this afternoon working on my driver. I had this out there the entire time. Anybody who's watching this tonight was practicing with me out there. You saw me use it. Todd uses it every single time he practices. So you guys aren't going to? That's how you do it because you do it 
enough during practice to make it perfect that allows you to get that feel when you go play. And then trust yourself. Because guys, you do this enough correctly, you'll do it right in the golf course. Okay? Now, there is guys I've seen that have done this. If you want, and I'm not going to recommend this, okay? But I will show you something they've done. They'll set up, and, I'm, and I'm, a lot of you alumni or guys know what I'm going to talk about here. They'll set up and they'll go, okay, from the heel of the golf ball to right now, the middle of this grip right here, just below here is 36 inches. Now, that's not true for everybody because some drivers are a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter, okay? D depending on your size. But you can measure that. What is 36 inches, okay? So I go right here. So right now, from there, I'm going to do it again. From right here to here. No, but so I take that back. It was from the driver to the G. It was 36 inches. So now, they'll go on the golf course, and I've seen them do this. And they'll actually go out there, and they'll set up, and they'll go, okay, is that the right distance? That's pretty close. I've seen them do that. I don't recommend that. Here's why. Because I don't want you focusing on fundamentals in the golf course. You're focused on playing the game on the golf course. You focus on fundamentals on the golf course, you're going to get in your own way. Welcome to our Alert Attitude of a Difference School. Welcome to our Course Management Mental Game Alert Attitude of a Difference School. This is what we talk about. The second you get in that golf course and you focus on fundamentals, you are not going to play good golf because the body gets in an uncomfortable state. We like it to be in a comfortable state when you're working on fundamentals. We love it. That means you're making changes. But when you're on the golf course, you're trying to get in a comfortable state. And you should have practiced enough prior to that, that when you get out there, it's not a guessing game. You know exactly what it feels like. Boom, I'm in that position. Okay? That's how you do that. You practice it correctly enough that when you go out there, it becomes automatic. It becomes a subconscious movement on the golf course. You know, it's interesting. You want a theme of what our mental game on course school is? How do you turn conscious thought into subconscious thought? How do you turn conscious thought, which is per practice type B, conscious type practice, into subconscious thought, which is going on the golf course and playing? And we got even apps in the phone. We got apps that'll show you how to do that, that you can actually, that Paul Monahan will actually show you that actually can monitor and stress that and show you that and increase your ability for having perfect practice and perfect play. So that's all about, but that's what was a great question for that. That's how you do that. All right. Next question. All right. Should I be fitted for a closet for embarking in the single plane swing tiger? In addition to this, mm -hmm. people have also asked if I've been fitted by my pros, uh -huh. and I've fitted clubs, am I okay? No. For single pro? No, absolutely not. Show you be important. Absolutely. Tiger, this tiger, is that Tiger Woods? <laughs> Maybe Tiger's given up and, and decided to come single playing because of his back. Absolutely. Why? Because you're not going to get in our methodology. You're not going to get in our system properly unless you have fitted clubs. Guys, here's the deal. Okay. Here's a seven iron that fits me perfect. Okay, this one fits me perfect. That's why it's in this bag back here, because it fits me perfect. All I got to do, you're going to sit there and say right now, how do I get the proper distance from a 7-iron? Well, if it hits you perfect, it's real simple. I sit it flat on the ground. I push it forward. I now set up. I have now the perfect distance from this golf ball with the perfect lie, perfect length. I'm ready to rock. Perfect spine tilt, perfect angle. I'm ready to go. If this club was too upright, and I don't think I have one in here now. Yeah, I do. Right here. Here's a club that's too upright. Okay? So now, here's a 4 and that's too upright for me. Okay? So right now, I have no spine tilt. I'm, that's flat on the ground. I have no angle. I have, I'm too close to the golf ball. I, right now, I would, swing, I would come over top of this and potentially shake it every time. If I got a perfect set for four iron, that toe is now three or four degrees off the ground. I know that's hard to see. Okay? I'm going to heel dig this and hook the crap out of it. Okay? So um, the issue is this. A properly fit club allows you to get in the proper positions that fits our methodology. It's amazing how many guys say, well, I'm going to work on my swing, get a little bit better, and then I'll fit my clubs later. Yeah, you'll just go away. You will just disappear. Because those improperly fit clubs will not allow you to get in the positions that we need you to get into. Not only at setup, but at impact. Guys, you start heel digging the club or toe digging the club. Here's the worst thing. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to cause so much stress and impact to your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. This can potentially damage your body. You're going to be done with golf anyway. So it won't be us that injure golf. It'll be yourself. A properly fit club is scary what it does. And guys, uh, you guys watch my newsletters. Maybe you just don't believe them. How many times did I put in there, I just got fit for clubs and it was crazy how much easier I made the system. I just got fit for clubs, got the clubs. It was crazy how much better I made it overnight. I'm not making that stuff up. Go on to Facebook, go on to our social media, go talk to the guys. Don't talk to me. Talk to the tens of thousands of guys that I fit. And by the way, 
I looked on it three days ago. My wife asked me because she knows how much how busy I am. I went on a trip to Minnesota. I sat there all week. I was on my computer about half the time. She's like, how many fittings do you have in there? I think I had close to 320,000. 320,000 fittings in the computer. That's what I was looking at. I'm looking at Thomas. Thomas believes it, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So if you're not one of those, yeah, you're out. So 320,000 fittings. Yeah, so there you go. There's nobody in the world that's got that many fittings, okay? And that's stuff I just send back to you. So this is the length of your clubs. This is the line of your clubs. Jeff likes your clubs. Grip size your clubs. Your set makeup. That's what we do, okay? All right. So um, are we good? Are we getting more questions? Okay, we still have that one giveaway for tonight. So real quickly, um, on the announcements, number one is, um, I just I will apologize for this if this offended anybody. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. But the Single Point Anywhere membership is, is full. Um, if you want to get into Elite, you want to get in VIP, there's a couple spots of those, okay? If you want to get on the wait list and get, I mean, I, I can tell you where you're on the wait list if you email me or I can have Shane or Thomas tell you. But um, I don't do that. Those guys do it. Send me an email. I'll get you on that wait list. I'll get you on and then they'll call you. And if you want it at the time when they contact you, you can take it. If you don't want it, then we'll just go to the next guy or next gal. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. But I just want you guys to know that because you're going to wonder why sometimes we get specials and sometimes we don't. We get specials and we got a bunch of openings and we don't. That's usually full. Okay. That's number one. Number two is the putter's coming out. I'm getting a dozen emails a day. I know Brad's probably getting more emails a day. Please understand, we're going to go as fast as we can. My guys, we work around the clock in these things together. We got to assemble them now. We got to give us about a week to a week and a half to get assembled. They're going to go out. I'm shooting the, the final instruction for it tomorrow. The, what's out there right now is a video of me and Todd talking about it. The final instruction, there'll be a bunch of videos. It'll be like four or five videos of instruction on how to use it. I'm shooting tomorrow and they'll be out in the next few days. I'm looking at the, my video guys over here. It'll be out in the next few days. They're Thumbs up, okay? It's going to be amazing stuff, okay? And we'll break down exactly how to use that putter. It is crazy. I will tell you right now, I played golf with two individuals in the past week. One of them's name's Tracy Phillips. One's name's um, Shannon Friday. You guys know Shannon worked for me before. These are two guys that I probably respect more than anybody else in the world with their short game. I think if all th us three together, we talk short game, short game. Tracy is the top senior tour player for the PGA. You guys can look up online. Phenomenal player, very, very good friend of mine. I showed him these putter, these putter. Tracy and Shannon, Shannon in particular, told me, he looked at me and goes, this is going to be world changing for putter. He goes, this, this is industry changing. This is crazy. This is industry changing stuff. And I go, I just, I go, yeah. And he goes, no, it was Tim. This is industry changing stuff right here. And I go, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's it's going to be pretty nuts. Okay. It's going to be pretty nuts. You guys, see, you guys are going to see this part a lot more than just in our academy. It's going to go off. So it's, it's going to go off. You guys will see that. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, last thing on that, guys, if you can get into school, get into school. Two weeks from now, you want to make the most dramatic change you can possibly imagine in your game, and it will be ridiculously good for you guys. Join me September 26th to 28th in Phoenix with me and Paul Monahan. Okay? I'm a half student in that school. I learn from Paul every time I go, and I use it when I go out and play. Every time I go there, I learn, learn stuff. I, it's, it's incredible, the stuff he gives. It's incredible. I mean, I guarantee you, I guarantee you come to that, by the 27th afternoon, you're going to be looking at me and going, okay, this is life-changing. Okay. Okay. Um, we good? All right, guys, if you need anything, Tim G at grazegolf.com. Tim G at grazegolf.com. I will either answer it or I'll get you the right person. Okay. We'll get you on a list, get you the right person, answer your questions. Don't miss the double trade-in special. The double bonus and the trade-ins ends in about five days, six days. It's for any clubs you want to trade in towards Paradigm Big Bertha, other clubs. It's massive, okay? Massive. And it's going to go down dramatically after this weekend. All right. So three-day school winner. We got one? All right. Mike Day from North Manchester, Indiana. So Mike Day from North Manchester, Indiana. He gets Indiana, right? <laughs> okay. So congratulations, Mike. Was that the winner for tonight? Yep. All right. Congratulations, Mike. It's your choice of three days of school anytime, anywhere you want to go. All right. So guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I want you guys to make sure you guys are getting our newsletter. Make sure you're getting information. You know, the first and third Monday of every month, you guys should be getting our newsletter. There's all kinds of instructional articles in there. Um, guys, use the on-demand. Use on-demand. Use on-demand. I cannot stress that enough. You can go into any smart apparatus, go into the app store, pull up on-demand. Demand. Okay, you can get in there. Members, you can get in there. We'll get you the code. You get in there. Okay, it's amazing stuff. Use it, improve it. Let us know. You search for something you can't find it. A couple days, we'll have a fix for you. Okay, so guys, thanks for joining us tonight. And well, guys, we'll see you real soon.